It's Barbara from Divine Creative Love. Today I want to show you how to use metallic watercolors in your illustrating Bible. So the verse we're journaling on is Matthew 6, 19 through 21, store up treasures in heaven. And we're going to be using the Finitech metallic watercolors. And you can see here I've already sketched out some key parts of this verse. So it's ready to go. And we'll use the watercolors to paint the words into the margin. So you can see how pretty and shiny they are. And before we get started, I just want to tell you what my favorite thing about the Illustrating Bible is. The pages are nice and thick, a whole lot thicker than a normal Illustrating Bible. Sorry, a normal journaling Bible. So you actually don't have to use gesso to prep the page before you paint on it. You can see in the back here where I've tested all my supplies to see and most of them don't bleed through it even at all. So let's get started. So what I'm doing here first is I'm just tracing the outlines. I had like a little treasure box stamp that's going to go right there and then a little word cloud that's halfway down the page that I'm tracing. And then I'm just going to add some background color to those first. And here I'm just erasing the lines just a little bit. You actually can't see them anymore on the video, but they're still just faintly there, just enough to see where I'm painting. And so I'm using the gelatos, then the gold and the blue for the backgrounds. And this is my favorite way to use gelatos, to just smear them on a palette and spray them with water. It turns them into watercolors. So I just added like a little halo of gold around where the treasure box is going to go. And then I'm just cleaning off the brush. And then I usually just wipe the palette off and then start over with a different color. I'm just painting the whole cloud background where the words are going to go. It's such a pretty shade of blue, isn't it? So now that I'm finished with that, I'm just using my heat it tool to dry the page. I want to make sure it's good and dry before I do anything else on top of it. And then I'm just going to stamp the treasure chest on top of that little gold halo at the top. And for this, I recommend using the archival ink or some similar ink that's waterproof. Because when you're going to paint over the top of a stamp, it's always a good idea to use a type of ink that won't bleed or run when you paint over it. So later I'm going to come back in and paint that treasure chest. So now that that's done, we're ready to trace in the words. And for that, I'm bringing in my light pad, which is so handy. It would be pretty difficult to see the words without the light pad. The light pad makes it much easier. So I'm just tracing in treasures, treasures in heaven at the top. And then for the little word cloud, 
I decided to think of some words that are, you know, what are treasures in heaven. So I came up with love, generosity, God's word, and also relationship with Jesus. Of course, that's not an exhaustive list. There, you could probably think of a lot more things that are treasures in heaven, but those are the things that came to my mind. So I'm just tracing all those over the top of the little gelato's cloud that I painted in. And then down at the bottom, I couldn't leave out the where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, which is so true. It's a very important part of that verse, I think. And then once we're done with that, I actually did forget to cross the T in treasures, so I had to go back and do that. Oh, there it goes. So now we're going to start working with the Finitech metallic watercolors. So what I like to do is I just take my little mini mister and just spritz it a couple of times to get it wet and then let it kind of soak in. And the first thing I'm going to do is just the treasures in heaven at the top. I couldn't decide what colors to put in the treasure chest yet, so I decided to leave that for last. And I'm using this little Well Cornell brush to just fill in with the purple on the treasures in heaven. And I'm using a thicker downstroke and then a lighter upstroke. It's not the easiest thing to do with a paintbrush, but that, that little teeny brush is pretty good with it. And you can see that purple color, it's almost like a two-tone color. It's a really rich purple, but then depending on how the light hits it, it looks dark gray. So you can see when I shift the page, it's it's purple, but it's dark gray. But it's really pretty. And I think it looks so good with the little golden halo above it. So here I was just going back in and adding a little more color. Some of the letters didn't get very good coverage the first time. It's so pretty. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, change colors. So I'm going to do a different color for each uh, of the words in the word cloud. So red for love, that little kind of rusty orange for generosity. Then I'm going to do blue for God's word and green for relationship with Jesus. So each one stands out kind of on its own. And then I'm just cleaning off my brush in between. And like I said, you can probably think of a lot more 
things that are treasures in heaven. These are just a few that came to my mind. So next I'm using the blue for God's word. And it's kind of like the purple. It's a little bit two-toned. It's depending on how you look at it, it's kind of dark and then it's kind of bright depending on how the light hits it. But it's very pretty. I kept having to add more water to the blue. For some reason, it dried out faster than the other colors. You'll notice when you're painting with them, they'll start to get thicker, and that's when you can tell it's time to add more water. the green for relationship with Jesus. And this one was a little trickier since the letters are a little bit smaller. I wasn't able to make them as thick on the downstrokes, but I think it still turned out really pretty. So you can see there, the green, it doesn't show up quite the same as the other colors, but it's still really pretty. So for that last part, I'm going to paint it in a gold color. And uh, this Finitech metallic watercolor set comes with two different golds. There's a really pretty uh, antique gold that's on the left there that's more of like a warm gold. And then there, the one on the right is like a super bright, bright yellow gold. They're both really pretty. But I decided to do the more antique gold one for this, for this part. You can see how beautiful that is kind of pops. Of all the colors in this set, I think the golds are the most dramatic. They just really pop off the page. And fun backstory about this little brush that I'm using. Actually, 15 years ago, approximately, I took a design class in college, and this brush was a required purchase for the design class. They sold it in the campus store, and I purchased the exact brush that the teacher specified. And 15 years later, I still use this little brush for so many things. It's just super handy for detail work. You can see how beautiful that gold is turning out to be. 
Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I'm just going back and adding a little bit more there. So the next step, I'm going to tackle the treasure box. I could not decide which colors to use, so I just kind of jumped in. Just adding a little bit of gold. And it's totally okay when you're painting with these watercolors if you go a little bit outside the lines. The little treasure box, it was so detailed. Some of the little parts of it were pretty small. So I went outside the lines a little bit. But you can actually go back in later after the paint's dry and go in with a, a black pen, like a Pigma, Mi Pigma Micron pen, and re-outline the, the black part of the stamp. So don't worry about it if you go a little bit outside the lines. You can always go back in later and fix it. So here I'm adding some of that more yellow bright gold. And I wanted to make sure that the antique gold parts were dry first so I wouldn't mess them up with the bright gold. It's hard to see on the video the difference in color um, between the two golds, but they're definitely each each have their unique unique shades. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm using the blue to color in that middle part of the chest. And here you can see again how t kind of two-tone the blue is. Like if you s look at it in the right light, it's really, really blue. And then sometimes it's more like a dark gray blue. It's so pretty though. So then I decided, oh, I want to go in and add a little bit more gold at those little petals in, on the bottom corners of the chest. And then I wanted to make sure it was good and dry before I added any more color. So for the rest of the bottom corner of the chest, I decided to go in with that red. I thought that made it so pretty. And again, it wasn't easy to stay inside the lines, but later on I went back in and, and traced around the, the black outlines with a Pigma Micron pen. So I decided to add a little bit more purple here, which actually turned out really gorgeous compared to that red. It makes the red look like kind of like a rose color. And 
coming in. I'm drying it to make sure that I'm not going to mess up the previous colors that I put down before I add more. Because the last thing that I'm going to do is do that pearlescent white on the rest of the chest. So I don't want any of the purples or the pinks or the golds to bleed into the white when I'm painting the white. And that white, it's actually pretty um, opaque. So it did a pretty good job of covering up what was left of the little gold halo in the background. And you can see how pretty the like pearlescent sheen is. Now the whole chest kind of glows. So there's one last part that I forgot to do earlier. With the gelatos, I actually was intending to paint over the verse to, as a highlighter, but then I forgot. So I'm going back in as the last step to paint that in, just to highlight the verse. And there you can see how pretty that's turning out. So there you can see the finished page. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And those metallic watercolors turned out so shiny, especially the gold, it just really pops. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any of my future Bible journaling videos. Bye!